good day to you fellow pickers and stuff lovers uh, so my name is Chantal and the channel's name is Alice Ops we haven't seen you in a while I hope you're doing well it's great to be back it's always great to be back I'm sorry it's so long sometimes between videos but we will try and do better we will but I hope that this video finds you well and um, I'd like to introduce you to my assistant for this video. Her name is Maisie, and um, we actually first met Maisie at a thrift store in our little town here, and um, we met her on Halloween Day. And we had gone to our little thrift store and possibly found a couple of things, you know, and just before we headed out, on top of a really high cupboard, I saw her, and she was wearing a long blonde wig and a witch's hat, and she was all kind of dolled up for Halloween wearing this dress, which is obviously modern and everything, but I just got a little closer and thought, this um actually good quality? Like not a porcelain doll that is modern and kind of sketchily, hastily colored. And I thought this has enough good quality, it looks like, that it could be an older doll. But, you know, it's on top of this really high cupboard. So I asked the person running the store if I could see her. So he brings her down. And the minute that... I see her up close, I become more convinced that this is an antique doll. I used to collect antique doll, uh, antique dolls, and well, I still do from time to time if I find something really spectacular or important to me. And, and so I love to sell antique dolls, and I thought, oh, this, this could be a good thing to pick up to resell. So, uh, you know, I saw that she had damage. Uh, she's got a little bit of crazing here, of cracking. Someone repaired her hand because some of her fingers must have um, been broken or cracked. But aside from that, I couldn't see anything wrong. You know, there's no cracks, no nibbles. Her teeth are great, which sometimes that's something fragile that could be um, broken. Um, there's, there's nothing wrong with her. So I thought, but you know, seeing the repairs on the hands and that sort of thing, I'm going, you wouldn't do that with a new doll. This is an antique doll. And, and just the delicate shade of the hand painting on all of her, um, to me that really spells out quality that you would have had in those days. So the next thing I look for is the price tag, because I thought there's no use looking at this if it's a $300 doll or something. And I see seven. Seven. Seven dollars. So I thought, okay, well, I'm going to buy her. And just so that I could validate what I was doing, because I, I was so happy I was shaking. Um, I checked on the back of her head. Normally, you'll see, I won't show it to you. This is too complicated to show you the markings. I, I'm not sure you're going to, well, I'll try it. I'll try it because it's exciting and it's fun. And, and if you haven't seen markings on a doll before, it might be might be interesting to see them. Um, I saw the markings and the markings uh, spell out Simon and Halbig, H-A-L-B-I-G, and it says something else, but I can't remember. But the important thing is Simon and Halbig because they were um, manufacturers of dolls uh, at the turn of a century, so, you know, 1890s, 1900s, that sort of thing. This is the um, era from which she comes. Um, and um, to me, what, what helps me date dolls like that is simply that they have that look that if you look at um, black and white pictures of back then and you look at children, 
um, the, the, the styles, you know, the, the hairstyles and all of that, but they're really capturing um, this sort of chubby face. Um, it, it, it's, it's really a question of style. Um, very turn of the century. Uh, there's there's a sort of focus on on softness and innocence um, that maybe at an, another time you'll have something else. Like you'll have uh, as you go along, as you progress along the years, you'll have dolls that are more realistic. And back then you wouldn't have had that so much unless it was a character doll specifically made to look very realistic. And those are almost scary. I'm sure that some of you will find her scary. Uh, and that's, that's fine. I know there's a spookiness because dolls evoke humans and, you know. Uh, but um, she has beautiful paperweight eyes, which... I'm going to have her sit up a little closer. Maybe you can see. Beautiful um, glass paperweight eyes. Um, and I'm really quite fond of her. She even has uh, earrings, uh, uh, a place for earrings in her ears. Uh, this is her original wig. And... Um, I named her Maisie because she looked like a Maisie to me. She has a kind of cheerful face. And I have to say, I haven't seen a, a beautiful German-made turn-of-the-century doll of that size very often in my life, live in person, you know, um, of a, a price that I could purchase. So I think she's staying with us for a little while. I'm, I'm very fond of her. Now I have to find her a, um, an antique dress. I thought I had one someplace, but we'll see if I can find it again. If not, I'll have to buy one. Uh, one of the, the other thing I will tell you, just because this is special to me, um, is that I used to buy uh, books on antique dolls and magazines and all of that. And sometimes, you know, they would have these beautiful spread of photo sessions of dolls with miniatures and beautifully dressed dolls. And I was like, ah, oh, that's hard to find. And I feel like this is the perfect type of doll where I can do that and have my own special photos and, and you know, have her um, help decorate the house around Christmas. She can sit next to her fireplace and be cheery and decorative around the holidays with an antique dress on, hopefully, and bring a little bit of that um, uh, old-fashioned Christmasness. Duh. So, then, um, because it's cold here at this time of year and there are no um, garage sales, there hasn't been much of anything going on in the world of resale because of the pandemic. Um, we have gone to some, um, some secondhand stores that we hadn't gone to before and that kind of yielded a, a few different things. Um, there was a day where it was really warm out and we thought, oh, before they close up for the season, let's go check out a flea market. We did. We picked up a couple of good things there. And one of the things I picked up uh, is a few pieces of jewelry. This one was fun because it's a little purse. It hangs on a little gold tone bow, uh, even opens and closes. And I demonstrate this. And um, it has a little enamel souvenir pin of some place in Quebec. Um, and that was fine. There were a few other pieces that I will show at some point. I also saw this. 
Um, this was all in, in a sewing box. Good thing my husband pointed out to me that there was jewelry in this box. And so I came over, I got that, I got the pendant, I got a couple of sets of cufflinks and like another thing. And we managed it down to, um, I think it was $35 for everything, which was like okay because I thought well you know I'll maybe able to get 10 to 15 on this it's a little different it's something that opens and closes and is just cute and this is quite different and I loved the chain and it looked to me to be handmade but here I'm going to tell you this part of the story where there was a sticker on the back of this pendant and the sticker read something like a name well-known artist $55 so when I'm bargaining with the stall holder he's showing me this and he's going well you're getting a good price see like this was $55 well between you and I and the fence pose I'm not gonna take some guy's idea of what this is worth how do I know where he got his information? Maybe if I did the same research he did, I would come up with a different result. You know, I don't know this, I, whatever. So I'm prepared to pay maybe a little bit more than I would usually because I got the feeling that this was handmade and I said, yeah, okay, let's take a chance, but I'm not basing myself on a sticker that I, don't know who stuck the sticker there. <laughs> so, <laughs> fine. Anyways, I got it home. I take a better look. Ah, it's actually signed. Can I find it? At the bottom of this, it's actually signed here. Pericles. And Haiti. After doing our research, it turns out that an artist goes by Pericles, I think it's Jean-Baptiste Pericles, a, a Haitian artist who does his stuff by hand. His jewelry goes for really good money. Um, so good that I went with, this looks handmade, it looks different, it looks artistic, let's buy it, even if it's, you know, $15 instead of five. Um, we put it up for auction because I didn't know exactly how to price it. So I started it at auction for $150 and it's there presently with a bid on it. Someone bid $150 on it and we'll see if it goes up any higher, but at any rate, it should sell for $150 now. So, <coughs> so sorry, I'm very, very excited. Recently, there was a church bazaar um, at this bazaar where they have like a boutique every month. They had stuff priced very well. They were very good about the whole distan distancing thing. They only allowed three people at a time in a room. Very well done. So what happened was that we were walking along. We saw this bucket. Later on, when we asked for the price, they said $4. This is a Mouette et Chandon ice bucket. We have sold the same thing before, um, maybe between $40 to $60. And this one is in better condition than, than the ones we've sold before. So right away, that was such a score. That is just exciting because you don't have to do anything but recognize that it's a cool thing. At the same place, we bought this because it has style. And it has that MCM style, just fun. Um, it's missing a foot. There should be another one of these here. But I think it still has style. It was $5. We'll see what we can make on it. I don't know. We ought to be able to get at least 15. I'm thinking more 20. Something like that. The same place we found this. 
I'll show you the back just so you get a good sense of what this thing is. Uh, it was priced at two dollars and we saw that it was a copper block, a printing block if you will. There's an image on it and you use it to print in a newspaper for example. Uh, so it's old, it's an antique. I kind of thought that what I saw on the photo was that there was a plane on it so I thought good subject matter, it looks older, we'll get it home. My husband did some research and uh, the, the negative, the, the photo version should be appearing next to this one so that you can see what we saw when my husband scanned it. And basically it's um, two guys standing in front of a plane and on the plane it says London to London uh, and the the story behind this is basically Sir Robert Carling? No, oh, not Robert at all, very sorry. Sir John Carling, uh, who is a Canadian who started the Carling um, Brewery. Also, um, he decided to have this uh, sort of marketing thing uh, where there would be this plane that would fly from London, Ontario to London, England and kind of promote Carling Brewery. And um, so that's, that's the plane on this picture, basically. Um, and, and that happened in 1927. And um, unfortunately, the, the plane disappeared. And so that's a whole lot of history packed behind this plate, which can produce photos to commemorate all of these um, incredible things. So there you go, we found that. <clears throat> um, at the same place, these curious critters were waiting for us. Eight dollars for the two. I believe they are bookends. They're little dragons or dogs. And to me, it's obvious that they are hand forged. We think they're brass, maybe? Brass and hand forged, I mean, obviously they have... Uh, um, you know, they've uh, darkened over time, um, but that was a very interesting item because it's different, it's handmade, there won't be just another one made exactly like that. They're curious, they're fun. So I really don't know what we'll ask for that, but I'll, I'll try for a little bit of money because they are very fun. And they have a lot of panache. At the same place we bought this little duo, a uh, seagull, uh, I'm gonna tell you, Seagull Studios and you know it's nothing incredible but it is by Jill Butler and has a very nice theme of Paris. And that was three dollars. We figure over the holidays it's a good giftable item. We went to a um, regular thrift store that we usually go to and good things happened. My husband found this radio for seven dollars. It's a Juliet. It's obviously a vintage thing. I would say probably 1960s and it's a radio and also has a short wave uh, feature and he cleaned it all up and it's very cute I think it just it has a lot of style it can just be decorative but it also works so hey <clears throat> and my piece de resistance although they were all 
just there were real finds this time you know like the the copper plate that's just I've never found one before that is just magic but the thing that felt a little bit like I was in a dream was when I saw these boxes on our regular rack on our way to the cache and I thought in my dream these boxes would be full of Christmas ornaments. They're old yellowed cardboard boxes. They have that old back store feel. They're full of Christmas ornaments. OMG. I just, yeah. you could ask my husband, I was shaking. That's another one of those rare times where I was just shaking. And you could be jealous of this. But you're really going to be jealous if I tell you that I have four other boxes of all of these. <laughs> no, I don't want to make you jealous. I want to make you joyous. Isn't it fun to know that that, that can happen? It was just on a night, on an evening, we decided to go there. And these were $1.50 a piece. All of these. With all of the normaments. And I just I couldn't. And also at the same store, we found these for a dollar seventy-five that are that are marked made in Czechoslovakia. And these, which I thought were amazing, I love the box, of course. I'll see if I can open it for you. Yeah, I can uh, because these have these gorgeous designs on them. They're in very good condition. Some of them don't match. This is just a red ornament. But then you have these. They're bells. They ring. They have shooting stars and moans. This is magic. And this is all I had for you this time and then there'll be more because we're pre-Christmas season and I'm going to wish you all sorts of magic. I hope you can go on lovely walks, lovely winter walks and that you find smiling faces everywhere. We love you so much. Take very good care. Bye-bye for now.